So I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to doing this mic thing. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. What? Are you all good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about leadership tonight. Um, and specifically, I want to talk about spiritual leadership. And I, I think this is a tough topic because I think we, we tend to fall in, into two kind of categories here. Um, the first is when somebody gets up and says, I'm going to talk about leadership and spiritual leadership, say, look, that's not me. Um, I, I'm not really a leader. I'm kind of a follower. I, I don't really know anything. I, I've never felt like I'm a leader. And so I'm just going to check out, and, and, I'll, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. Um, and, and the other category would be, would be somebody who, who comes in and, and you say, hey, I'm going to talk about spiritual leadership, and there's kind of a lot of baggage attached with it. You know, there's a lot of, of bad connotations or a lot of misperceptions, a lot of, um, a lot of history behind that, that that can interfere with it. And, and that's, that's where I'm coming from. Um, my natural inclination is toward leadership, as, as you'll probably guess as I go along here, but I bring a lot of baggage to it. So, so because of that, I want to step back and I want to start out by giving a definition of, of leadership, of what I want to talk about tonight, what we want to focus on. And so I went to dictionary.com, and I pulled out a couple of things um, that, that defines leadership, to lead. And the first is to influence, as in to have an influence on, on the people around you. Um, the second is to go before or with and show the way. And the third is to take or to bring, as in to take someone or bring someone on a journey with you. And so... So I want to kind of kind of flesh these out, and I, I want to start out with the first one, influence. You know, if, if we look around tonight at our, at our tables and, and at the people in this room, I hope that we can all say that somebody in this room has had an influence on us. You know, we've been sitting at a table with somebody, something they've said, um, and I know this is true for me, something they said, I've taken that, I've listened to it, and hey, that made an impact on me. You know, I thought about it, it changed the way I think or, or acted. They've had an influence on me. And so I, I think that's, that's the context of, of influence and leadership, specifically spiritual leadership. And it occurs, spiritual leadership occurs when we take that influence and, and we take it to the next level to show someone what it looks like to follow after God, um, to invite them along on our journey. And, and I think that, that in reality, we all have influence on people in our lives. If there's somebody out there that we have an influence on, and we have a choice, what do we do with that influence? You can either choose to, to use that influence and invite them along on your journey to pursue God with you, or not. And, and so it, it kind of comes down to this, this idea of, of who do we have an influence on? Why is that choice important to me? So who do we have influences on? You know, like I said, the guys in this room. I, mean, I look around and I see people who have, who have had an influence on me. But outside of this room, you know, there's our families. Um, if you have a wife, kids, you know, I think of, um, think of I'm going to pick on Drew here. We, we were sitting at the cafe the other day in, in church, and I got to meet Drew's son. Um, and and Drew, Drew's, a, Drew's a football coach, and, and his son, his sole ambition was to tackle Will. And so, so you can see that, that Drew has an influence on his son. And so Drew has this choice. What do I do with that influence? Bring them along on my journey or not? And what about, but what about other places where, where maybe it's, it, there's not a family, maybe it's, it's you don't feel adequate here. What about in your workplace? Um, you know, we have influences there. I, I think of a guy at my workplace. You know, he says he's a Christian. Um, he claims Christ. He, he talks about, you know, what his kids are doing at church, where he's leading. But he also is known to send out dirty emails. He goes around and, and tells crude jokes. You know, he's having an influence on the people around him, and, and they see it. it's not a good influence, but he is influencing them in a way that moves them away from Christ. And what about other places? Our extended family, your parents, um, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces. You know, I think of, um, of I'm going to pick on Woody a little bit tonight. Um, he has, he has an extended family, his brother and some nieces that have been showing up at Blue Ridge and environments there. And he's used the influence he has over him, them because he's related to them to take them and invite them along on this journey with Christ he has. And he's gotten to see them start that journey, start their own journey, um, become Christ followers. 
You know, he used that influence to move them along, to bring them with him. And then I think there are some, some places that, that are tough because we wish we had more influence. You know, maybe that's, that's your wife doesn't want anything to do with, with church. Um, maybe it's, it's someone you know, a guy at work, a friend, who uh, they've seen religion, they don't care, they don't want anything to do with this Christ Jesus stuff. Um, what does God have for us there? You know, if God's calling us towards spiritual leadership, um, toward bringing people along on our journey with us, you know, what does God have for us there? So, so I want to take you guys along um, and start this out by going on my story. This is personal for me. Um, you know, Will, Will texted me and said, hey, Stephen's going to be out of town, and, and so would you speak on Monday night, and you can speak on anything you want to. And I was having a hard time with, with what I'm going to speak on because I wanted it to be something that's, that's my story, my journey, so I can share with you guys. And so I asked my wife, who knows me pretty well, and said, what have you seen God doing in me? And her response was that the thing that she sees God doing in me most was taking on responsibility of being a leader in our marriage. And I want to put it in context um, because that's kind of that's kind of where God has taught me about spiritual leadership, and we're kind of He's revealed a lot of His heart about spiritual leadership through my marriage. Um, but the principles and, and the things that He's revealed to me, they go beyond just my marriage, and they can be applied in all those other places where I have influence. Um, and God's showing me where, where I can apply those, and, and for you guys, for for other places where you have influence. You know, the the principles, the the idea of bringing someone along on your journey, doesn't just apply to one area. But my marriage, um, w when it came to leadership, I, I, like I said, I'm inclined towards leadership, and I was involved in a lot of places, um, mainly, mainly secular places, um, Boy Scouts, uh, in leadership positions within in my company and my employers. Um, and, and I saw this picture of a leader who was someone who, who looked out for the people they were following, who built loyalty with the people that, that were following. And so when, when the leader would go to do something, people would follow. And, and it was about building loyalty and trust and looking out for those people. But then there was the spiritual leadership. And I got to confess, you know, I really, for the longest time, I did not like that term spiritual leadership. Because what it brought into my mind was some experiences that, that I had, my past baggage, of being in church and seeing guys in the church use spiritual leadership um, as an excuse to dominate and put control over their wives. You know, the, 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 the context was, hey, look, the Bible says that you have to submit to me. I'm the head of the household. That's what it is. And I looked at that, and, and for me, I, I said, you know, if Christ was here, would that be how he would exert leadership? You know, would that be how he would define leadership and treat his wife um, or treat anybody who, who he had influence over? It was no. So, so when I got married, I, I, I avoided the responsibility of taking the leadership, taking on leadership in that relationship. <coughs> you know, I, I saw that lack of integrity. And so, so when it came to things like, you know, were we going to church? What church were we going to be a part of? Um, whether we were going to be, I was going to be, whether we were going to be in communion.